Hello everyone, welcome to Madlia. In this video, we are going to discuss XOR gate perceptron. Today we are just going to discuss the logical part or how we are going to build a XOR gate perceptron. And the coding part is going to be discussed in the further videos. Before moving towards the XOR gate perceptron, let's understand how the NOT gate, OR gate and AND gate perceptron are built. So we have for the NOT gate one input and one output. Assume the weight as minus 10 and this is the condition. So due to the minus 10 weight, the summation function is going to be zero for this input and for this input it is going to be minus 10. So you can easily understand that if summation is greater than or equal to zero that is only this condition it is going to give output as one and for all other condition that is a minus 10 it is going to give output as zero. Similarly for OR gate and AND gate we have built this perceptron. So for OR gate and AND gate we require two inputs and only one output. So let's discuss about the weights and the condition. So as for the NOT gate, let's calculate the summation value for OR gate and AND gate. So basically these are the weights for OR gate and AND gate. So this is the weights 10 and 10. So because of this weight, the summation value is going to become for 0, 0, 0 plus 0 is 10. So here 0, 1 into 10 going to give as the 10. 1 0 for the input 1 0 the summation function is 10 and for input 1 1 it is going to give value as 20. So now you can easily calculate the activation function condition here. So all the values which are greater than uh, summation values which have answer as a greater than 0 become output 1. So we have put the condition f if summation is less than or equal to 0 that is if summation is less than or equal to 0 it is going to give the output as 0 so you can see here and for all other condition it is going to give output as 1 and similarly for AND gate perceptron you can see here that we need output as 1 only for this last input test case so here the summation value is 20 and then before that the minimum value is 10 so we can easily put condition as if summation is greater than or equal to or greater than 11 or greater than or equal to 11 then output is going to 1. Here I have assumed that if the summation value is greater than or equal to 20 which falls in this condition only. So for this output is 1 and for all other remaining the output is going to be 0. Let's discuss the truth table for XOR gate. For XOR gate only for these two inputs the output is going to 1. For 0, 0 output is 0. For 0, 1 output is 1. For 1, 0 output is 1. And again for 1, 1 output is going to be 0. So how we are going to build the XOR gate person? As per the previous knowledge or as per the previous perceptron we have built for OR gate and AND gate, we have here a two inputs and one output. So what we are going to do, just like before, let's let assume weight as 10, 10 as per the OR gate and AND gate. And this is the condition, how this condition arises. Let's quickly calculate it. So for here, 0, 0, because of this weight, it is going to the, give the summation value as 0. This one, 0, 1, give the summation value as 10. This also give the summation value as 10. And for 1 comma 1 it is going due to summation value as 20. So now you can see that we require output 1 for exactly value as 10. So I have put a condition as if summation value is 10 then only the output is going to be 1. Here y represents a predicted output else the output is going to be 0. So this is the condition. Take a moment pause the video and think on this. For the 0, 0, it is going to that 0 is not equal to the summation value, that is, su summation is equal to 10. So it goes to give the output as 10. And three inputs are 
टेक अ मोमेंट हैपनिंग हियर सो बट डू यू रियली थिंक दैट दिस इज अ गुड परसेप्टन फॉर द एक्सर गेट वाई आई एम सेइंग दिस यू कैन सी दैट इफ यू अज्यूम दिस एज फॉर द ग्राफ we have the condition at 0 so here is the zero value so for all values which are greater than or equal to 0 the output is 1 so this is the graph for not gate perceptron so now you can easily see that whatever the values greater than 0 all gives the output as 1 and this gives output as 0 similarly for or gate and and gate i'm going to draw a graph so that you can understand for all values less than 0 the y is 0 so this is the graph for or gate and for and gate let's keep approximate value 20 here so all values greater than or equal to 20 gives the output at 1 else it is the 0 so all this perceptron give us the activation function on the comparison based condition which is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to or less or greater but for xor gate we have calculated the condition as not equal to this is not a good perceptron for xor gate so we have to try a different thinking approach so this is our the xor gate input truth table you can see here that we need output 1 for this two condition what if i am going to say that if we can any way manage to manipulate this two input as a one input that is let's suppose the this input 0,1 becomes 1,0 input i'm talking about input not talking about output just focus here and for 1,0 this is a, this as the same if we manage to modify this 0,1 input to 1,0 then we can easily achieve this with the help of normal perceptron as we discussed earlier so modified input weights so this gives just two condition that is a 1,0 and any other input if 1,0 is the input then we need output 1 else we need output 0 so in this way we have to just tackle three inputs first input is 0,0 second is 1,0 and third one is a 1,1 for this modified inputs and here we are going to called modified input as input dash 1 input dash 2 so you can also call as a complement it just represent this sign just represent as this is a not actual input turn now so now we have weights as 10 and minus 10 i have calculated this weight uh, by trial and error method in our previous all videos we have calculated weight with the help of the python program by recurring or uh, feedback loop with the activation function but in this video i have calculated the with the trial and error method so let's calculate for the 0,0 input the summation value is going to be here 0 for 1,0 it is going to be 10 and this input also 1,0 just notice this point and for 1,1 it going to again 0 because 1 into 10 10 and 1 into minus 10 is again minus 10 so 10 minus 10 is 0 so now you can see that we have to build such perceptron where the if the value is 0 or less than 0 then we need output at 0 so we have put a condition that if summation value is greater than 0 then output is 1 so you can see that here if summation value is less than 0 or less than or equal to 0 that these two cases then output value is 0 so and understand what i have just said or told you there now the question is how can we change the input so 
have you ever heard about hidden layer so in this video we are going to introduce a hidden layer already made a video on the bias function so you can check that video because in this video i am going to use a bias function but now focus on the hidden now at this point focus on hidden layer only so this is the perceptron for our modified input these are the two inputs which are actual inputs you can see that these are the modified inputs these are the actual inputs and this is the perceptron let's introduce this as the hidden layer because this modified input is work as a hidden layer only so how this is going to work we are going to discuss in further video we need to draw a from the actual input to the modified input that is a hidden layer so two lines from the x1 that is the input 1 and then two lines from the input 2 so this is our the perceptron put the weighted weights for the modified input that we have already calculated 10 comma minus 10 i'm going to assume the weight as 10 10 and minus 10 minus 10 so pause the video and calculate the activation function condition for x1 dash and x2 dash here we already have the activation function for this layer i hope you tried but this is not going to work because it whatever the condition is it is not going to convert this 0 comma 0 to 0 comma 0 then 0 comma 1 to 1 comma 0 and 1 comma 0 to 1 comma 0 and 1 comma 1 to 1 comma 1 actually what we have to do is that we have to keep the three inputs as it is and we just have to change this one input or invert this one input so how i have introduced a bias function b1 and b2 b1 goes for the x1 dash that is the uh, modified input one that is uh, and wait for b uh, bias one is minus for you and wait for the bias two is minus 50 so now let's calculate for the first input input 1 and input 2 let's take here input 1 and input 2 that is 0 comma 0 so 0 into uh, what happened here is this 0 goes from this line also and this line also so 0 into 10 going to be 0 0 into let's discuss about the extra dash later so this 0 goes from this line 0 into 10 going to be 0 so now see that this first 0 is this one 0 and this second 0 is this 0 so 0 plus 0 and the weight of the bias function is minus 5 uh, just assume that b1 is uh, this value is 1 and this also value is 1 so 1 into minus 5 becomes minus 5 so the overall summation for this x1 dash is going to be minus 5 and if you check our previous condition that if summation is greater than 0 then x1 dash is 1 else x1 dash is 0 in our case summation is negative that is less than 0 so our x1 dash became as 0 so we just got this value let's now focus on x2 dash value that is a modified input 2 value so so here 0 into 10 0 that is this 0 then 0 into 10 0 that is this 0 and plus minus 15 this one answer is minus 15 which is again less than 0 so we got our x2 dash as 0 is 0 comma 1 you will get uh, from this line 0 and from this line 10 because here the input is 1 so 1 into 10 is 10 and minus 5 become uh, give the output as 5 so because of this the summation value is greater than 0 so it gives the output as 1 so you can see that we have just changed our or modified our first input here so 0 comma 1 it gives the modified input 1 as 1 now focus on modified input 2 so this 0 gives uh, comes from this line and gives the 0 1 into 10 is 10 minus 15 makes it as a minus 5 
So you can see the difference here. Here we got 5 and here minus 5. This 5 because we have put a, a bias as a minus 5 and this bias is a minus 15 which is greater than our actual uh, weighted input or the summation value this we uh, here we got 10 10 minus 15 is 5 but here we got 10 and 10 minus 5 is 5 this is a positive so it gives the value as 1 this is a negative so it gives value as 0 so we have just altered alter the value for the input 0 comma 1 to 1 comma 0 and one com for 1 comma 0 you can easily understand now so this 10 from here it comes 0 so gives again 5 similarly here from the 10 this gives 0 from this line so again here 0 and because of minus 15 it gives minus 5 so now you can see that because of this 5 this input is 1 because of this minus 5 this input is 0 this test case also it is going to give the 1 comma 1 as a modified input so in this way we have successfully achieved the modification of the input after the uh, part after the modification that is from here to here this is the perceptron uh, further the hidden layer we have already designed this one which works on these inputs and to achieve this input we have designed this part with the hidden layer and the actual input which convert this actual input into the modified input so in this way our xor gate perceptron works pause the video understand the logic the programming part will be discussed in the next video or uh, i will take a next video as a xnor gate perceptron logic uh, whatever you would like you can comment down below so that i can make the first video as per your request so thank you for watching this video we will meet in the next video